sound and logical. I do hope that we can catch your spirit and catch your heart and that we together can hold hands and walk into the prophetical truth because in the prophetical truth you have an understanding of the times. Who could understand Iran today without the Bible? Nobody. This video will feature many approved pastors or YouTube verified accounts as they are marked as safe for online users. We hope you enjoy this production. Then we will take you to Iran in the birth of Christ and also in the birth of the church to show you there is a, a direct relationship that continued. And then we'll show you how Iran turned from Christianity and became Mohammedan. The possibility of an all-out war between Iran and Israel is a very real issue. 2,600 years ago, the headlines in the Bible written by the prophet Ezekiel in chapters 38 and 39 describe the condition of the Middle East right now exactly. And then uh, Iran and today with its relationship with Russia and the end of the world. It's going to be really exciting. I hope you will not miss any of the lectures. Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the Co-Prophet of the End Times. This will be part 10 in my series on the abomination of desolation as spoken of by Daniel the Prophet, especially as it refers to the End Times nation of Israel and to the end of the war. Now, what war is this? This is not the Ezekiel 38 war. Dis Desolations are determined. Iran says that if Obama attacks Syria, they will attack Israel, and they will. The Bible describes a war between Persia, Persia is Iran, of course, and a Russian-led coalition of anti-Semitic nations that will join forces to destroy Israel. Obama is not going to be able to go to the United Nations and tell them to stop Iran from attacking Israel. But what we are seeing now is fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy about the destruction of Jerusalem. And, and you can see there the blueprint of the future uh, through this man of God named Daniel. And history verifies the fact that this man did correctly prophesy the, the rise and the fall of empires. It is certainly uh, very, very exciting. Uh, the old world uh, that then was, and that Iran uh, here in the, in the heart of it here with the Holy Land and this area uh, right in here showing us that uh, uh, in the heart of the world uh, was, this, was this Persian Empire. Uh, well, the more modern map that we have uh, uh, right here, we can show you this place called Iran. And, and this is a big triangle through here where God has had his finger in his hand upon the situation there uh, from the time of Noah uh, un, un, until this day. But here is Iran uh, that you're reading so much about in, in, your, in your daily papers. It is an area that's intensely prophetic. As the book of Samuel says in the Bible, Netzach Yisrael lo yishakir. The eternity of Israel will not falter. It is the same Bible that tells us in the stories of the Old Testament, much which has guided many people across this world. But when we turn from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it is Romans that says to us, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, not any country, not any human being. So that the Bible can't be used as a convenient aid when it suits us and rejected when it doesn't. Mr. President, above all else, we need a global reset on peace. And don't forget my bumper sticker offer. If you would like to help promote my YouTube ministry, simply send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address you see below, and I will send you a free bumper sticker. Uh, what you have just heard in this first lesson and in the succeeding uh, four lessons can be secured uh, on a little audio tape that you can have in your own home. And we'd like for you to secure it and to have it. Uh, it is only $4 for the tape. And you may 
write to me, Lester Summerall, and receive it. You can play it again and again. Play it to your friends and your loved ones. And if you play it over about three times, you'll be able to come to a strong understanding of the prophetical relationship that the Bible said these things would be, and the Bible is true. These things have come to pass in the last days. And the rising up of Iran today and the turning toward Russia, which it will do, uh, is, is all showing you that they are part, and I'm going to prove it to you from the Bible, they're part of the last day battles, and they will be joined with Russia against Israel. There's a prophecy uh, recently commemorated and uh, uh, by Metropolitan Neophytos, which says that one day, this was uttered years ago, 20 years ago, by a ascetic in Crete, Theodore, an ascetic in Crete, he says, one day you'll be sipping coffee, you will hear the news that the Israelis have hit the nuclear program of Persia. That will be when the major worldwide events will start. At the same time, another sign, either shortly before or after, Erdogan, the head of Turkey, will fall. And this will be the sign of the great events that were mentioned in these prophecies. <laughs> Αλλά μετά την Περσία, όταν χτυπήσουν το πυρηνικό πρόγραμμα τη Περσία οι Εβραίοι, τόσο η Κίνα όσο και η Ρωσία θα υποχρεωθούν να να αντιδράσουν. Οι προφητείε λένε των Αγίων, και πρόσεξε όχι μόνο των Ελλήνων Αγίων, και των Ρώσων και των Ρουμάνων και των Σέρβων ότι θα ρίξουν πυρηνικά. Now in the world today, there is one nation that is known more than any other nation than as being as being behind terror, and that nation is of course Iran, which fired thousands of rockets into Israel just a few weeks ago. Therefore. Persia or Iran attacking Israel is predicted in the Bible. And guess what? That just happened. Now, am I suggesting that what just took place is going to lead to the scenario of Ezekiel 38? I don't think that's necessarily the case, but it certainly is a cause for us to sit up and pay attention. You know, Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption is drawing near. God made a promise to Abraham years ago. He said, I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. One of the reasons God has blessed the United States is because we have stood by our friend Israel. A conflict between Iran and Israel will be more serious than the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Hallelujah. It will be more serious because a conflict between Iran and Israel, it can easily become a world war. Because you can't fight Israel without fighting the Americans directly. How to do that? The big brother of Israel is, is the United States of America. So it's a potentially explosive situation. God, will not allow Israel to be destroyed. He won't allow Israel to be destroyed. Go and read the book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. The covenant of God with Israel is an everlasting covenant. In, in trying to remain in existence, they may make mistakes, just like all of us human beings. We make mistakes. Hallelujah. They may make mistakes. It, they, are, they are not holy angels. They are fallen human beings like the rest of humanity. Hallelujah. God will not allow anyone or anything to want to destroy Israel. God himself, because God has to protect his covenant with Israel, which is an everlasting covenant, he will wreck that nation into pieces. There will be no nation to talk about. Hallelujah. This prophetic assurance from Pastor Dr. Ian Love comes in after Iran launched hundreds of war missiles and drones from its soil 
over the weekend to Israel. Also, we'd like to tell you that I've had a personal uh, relationship with Iran in that while living in, in Israel, we brought back from Persia uh, some things that were made there. The, the, the carpet that I have under my feet here uh, is Persian carpet, and uh, I purchased it in a market in old Jerusalem when Jordan ruled. And it was uh, from an Iranian merchant or a Persian carpet maker. And, and so uh, we have a very personal relationship with that area. I think our president w w was simply uh, amazed when he suddenly realized he was up against a religious factor and not a political one in Iran. Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. The Messiah is very close, guys. Now is the time to start getting ready. How do we start getting ready for the Mashiach? How do we get, get ready for the coming of the Messiah? Well, we do so by living like the Messiah is here. Living the way we will live when the Messiah is here. So we have to live our lives with a full awareness of God. When we wake up in the morning until we go to bed at night, we have to be aware of our Maker, of our Master, Hashem. And be aware of His laws and what He demands of us and to share this with others. The Muslims are religious people. If you make them aware of what God said, they will not only stop fighting, they will take down the mosque so that we can build the Beit HaMikdash. Or we need to follow the instructions of the army, not of the politicians. This is a political war. But the army, I'm sorry to say, the higher echelons in the army are populated with pop politicians. That, okay, now we got the answer. <laughs> we came up with it. Why are they so afraid to win the war? I have no idea. There must be 10 different reasons and none of them are good. And it's not personal. It's not like Netanyahu doesn't want. No. There's, there's, there's a lot of influence behind this decision and it's... If you were whispering in his ear, you have his ear. What would you tell him? Don't give in. More than that, I don't know what he could do. I don't envy him. No, I mean, there's nothing to envy there. Absolutely. I think in the, in the beginning, he thought, says, well, look to here. What a political mess I'm in here uh, with them taking over my embassy. But he soon discovered it wasn't even political. It was religious. They said, we want to destroy America. You say, why is it destroy America? Because we have Jesus. Because we have God. And, and, and they, don't, they don't want this form of religion. They want another form of religion called Islam and called Mohammedism, you see. And, and so there's a, a deep-rooted moving there that will ultimately bring the Antichrist to the world. Now, you, you, you must know this, you know, or otherwise you'll have no understanding of the times in which we live today. And so the scenario that the Bible predicted, seemingly so impossible, is now falling into place. And Iran and Russia are two of the very, very big players. Now, Iran, like we mentioned before, Shia Muslims, only 10% of the Islamic world, but they have a view of the last days, a prophetic view yeah. that uh, a final Imam or Mahdi will come, yeah. who is basically, you know, the twelfth one, sort of an Islamic Messiah. He is, yeah, the Messiah, and and they will know he's there by the fact that he kills the Christians and the Jews, and, yeah. and then sets up this worldwide caliphate. There is another, says the Lord, uprising that shall take place in Egypt, and there is another uprising that shall take place even greater in Iran, and these uprisings I have said to you, look closely. For you will see a significant sign, for you shall see the cross. Why is this, the Lord says, those who have followed me and have followed my cross and taken it up, they shall gather my children, and there shall be uproars, and there shall be protests. And God says, I shall come for the sound of their cries, and I shall deliver Egypt in an unusual way, for there shall be another leadership that shall arise. No, Iran, you will not fight against Israel. 
The Spirit of the Lord will bring about a greater change in the nation of Iran. The Lord will establish peace between Jerusalem and Iran. And the Lord says that the people and the Christians that are hiding in Iran shall be free to walk through the streets of Iran once again. And the Lord says that the anointing and the spirit it's a thousand years of these dark times. During that time, Mohammedism uh, strengthened itself strongly and tremendously in many parts of the world. In less than 25 years, his followers captured Egypt, Palestine, Persia, and Syria, and became a tremendous force. In 75 years uh, from his beginning, they had captured North Africa and Spain, and, and these were all added to the crescent, uh, which is the symbol of Islam which is a symbol of Mohammedism. And for centuries, Islam uh, was the dominant power in the Mediterranean world. And, and many forces came against it. Uh, all the armies that marched out of Europe, the Crusaders and so forth, uh, they had an, uh, they, they had an en enemy down there waiting for them to fight with them. Iran trains, equips, and funds the terrorist armies of Hamas and Hezbollah who are begging for the green light to attack Israel with a nuclear weapon. Our leaders must take their rightful place at the head of the international table. They must start believing the threats of our enemies and stop ignoring the plight of our allies. We pray that you will subscribe and hit the bell to get notified about the weekly messages that will encourage you in every area of your life. And the Lord ministered to me something. I saw the angel flying over, over Israel. Iran has the bomb. That's what I had. It was as if the angel is telling Israel that your enemy has gotten that thing. Breaking news as we come on tonight, the major escalation in the Middle East. U.S. officials confirming that Iran has launched drones and missiles toward Israel. Well, obviously, Iran is involved, and obviously, Iran is the big brain behind uh, um, activating its proxies. But um, at the moment, we have this war to win. Uh, the war against Iran is uh, something bigger than that. But the international community should know the real face of Iran and its proxies through those atrocities that Hamas committed. So dangerous that the fellow, its fellow Islamic Muslim nations are scared of it, so much so that their fear of Iran has led them to open up relations with Israel. And there are two dominant branches in Islam. They are the Sunnites. And the, and the Shiites, or the Shiites. And it's the Shiites that are the liberal group, and they're the ones ruling in Iran right now. And they're the ones that are, that are talking to the world in no uncertain language. The Sunnites, which are uh, in a greater majority, uh, but uh, they, are, they, are the more, uh, they are the more conservative of the Islamic peoples. And so we have today uh, a situation that's risen in the world that's completely prophetic. He called Adam a prophet which he was not. He called Noah a prophet, which he was, and Abraham a prophet, Moses a prophet, and Jesus a prophet, and he himself a prophet and said, I am the last of the great prophets. He cut it off with himself. Now, you can stay alone and you can fabricate your own, your own ideas until you can get away out into desolation spiritually and think you're right. There are people living today that have gotten themselves off in a corner and got away out in the cults and, and, and got into error that is not true. The Word of God is truth. We've had it. We, we have had it from the beginning of time. And God's Word, the Bible, is true. And, and when you see a cult that has a little book associated with it, you better stay away from it. God does not need any angels. And Paul said, if an, even an angel tell you anything else but what's in this book, don't accept it. Don't accept it at all. And so we, we cannot accept any private revelations. That would be an intercontinental ballistic missile. That's not just to hit Israel. That's to hit us because we're the big Satan. Israel's the little Satan. So we're in their crosshairs. That's what they describe us as, the yeah, big yeah. Satan and the little yeah, Satan. Yeah, we're in their crosshairs. We're the, we're the big Satan. So yeah. let's pull the camera back, okay? So we're talking about 
a fulfillment of prophecy unique that's un it's recent, and Correct. that is the alignment of Correct. Persia, i.e. Iran, Correct. with Rosh, yes. and we read about that in Ezekiel, and their attack, of course, against Israel. Right. It has to be regathered again Correct. and placed back in their land, which Israel is. So now pulling the camera back, big picture, prophetically, uh, in the Bible, it foretells an invasion of Israel by a whole mass alliance of nations. And the amazing thing about it, the nations that we can identify, all of them actually, from Ezekiel, had a part in October 7th. This is the first time they were behind it, actually with, behind Hamas. First time, including Iran, as mentioned. The first time that these nations ever had part altogether in an invasion of Israel. It's still going to come, but this is moving it forward. Ezekiel says that Iran, or, you know, it, it Persia, Iran, is going Going to attack Israel. Well, that's never happened directly, and it's still going to happen. But this year, after all, all these things, Iran actually attacked Israel for the first time directly ever in history. So things are moving ahead. The other thing the Bible says, you know, you'll know you're in the last days when the nation of Israel is back in the world, has come back, when the nations are focusing on Israel, and when there's there's all sorts of conflict over Israel, and there's war over Israel. Well, we're all in that. You can check, yeah. check the boxes. We're there. Did you know that Hamas is actually found in the Bible? In Genesis chapter 6, God told Noah that he was about to send a flood to this earth to destroy the violence. And that word violence in the Hebrew is Hamas. But that's not even the crazy part. Jesus actually said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when he comes again. If you want to make sure that you're ready for the second coming of Christ, watch the video I linked below. What does Trump mean? He who sounds the trumpet. Jubilee. Trumpet. When did he come to power? The year of Jubilee. The President Trump. You know, and his name also means literally the trumpet. So the trump shall sound in the year of Jubilee. And he it says it's, the trump shall sound throughout the land. And when the trump sounds, the possession goes back to the original owner. The fact is, Iran does not want a war with the United States. And the United States does not want a war with Iran. And it's the Israelis who has been trying to sort of suck us into a war because he wants us, the United States, to really whack Iran, weaken it militarily, and especially to go after its nuclear capabilities. Because as you well know, they are close to the point where they can develop nuclear weapons. So the Israelis are the ones who want us to get involved in a big war with Iran. That's the escalation flashpoint. And the $64,000 question is whether you think the United States and Iran kind of colluding can work together to prevent the Israelis from getting us strong sanction against Israel. Europe and US must stop sending Israel arms. Our weapons are killing innocent people. Meanwhile, this administration has financed a genocide in Gaza for the last year, and every day you're up there denying accountability for it. So I mean, what gives you the right to lecture other countries on their moral? So if you have a policy question for me, I'm happy to take it. If you want to give a speech, no, but there are I mean, places in Washington where you can give a speech. Yeah, but people are, are sick of the bullshit. I mean, like, it is a genocide. Israel bombed seven different countries in the last week. More than a million people are already fled Lebanon and the world leaders are saying nothing. Just know, there's a history that went into making this. This is the map I presented here last year. It's a map of a blessing. It shows Israel, Israel and its Arab partners forming a land bridge connecting Asia and Europe between the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Across this bridge, we will lay rail lines, energy pipelines, fiber optic cables, and this will serve the betterment of two billion people. Now look at this second map. It's a map. Look at the second map. It's a map of a curse. It's a map of an arc of terror that Iran has created and imposed from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean. Just know, it's not the infallible word of God. It isn't. It is not. Because the person that we say wrote it, did not exist in the first place. There's a famous medrash, it's Niyaka Chumani, and it's been quoted a number of times, where it says Niyaka Chumani, that at the end of time it says, Bishana Shayovoy HaMashiach, in the year that the Mashiach will arrive, Pars, Persia, will be Magad Umas, will agitate Esau and the nations of the world, and so on. And in Kanis world, the Jews will be very much afraid, and so on. I'm not going to go into the whole medrash there. At that point, it says, Yotza Baskol, a Baskol, a voice member comes out and says, Why are you afraid? Do not be afraid. I'm doing this for you. He named Bo Sha'askulaschem. This is the hour of your redemption. What the Yaakov Shimon is saying is something unbelievable. That the Mashiach will not arrive until something happens first, which is the sign that he's about to appear. What's that? That Persia will threaten the world and so on and so forth. 
Now, if you had told me 20 years ago that Iran, which is Persia, can threaten the world, I would have laughed at you. What? Persia is a third world country. What are they going to do to do anything? It's a joke. But suddenly, the Khomeini happens, there's a revolution, there's now a Muslim state, and you know, there's oil, and they're working on a nuclear bomb. Wow. Suddenly, Persia, or Iran, is at the center of the news. Right now at this very moment, news and news every day of things that's happening, biblical prophecies and everything, and this is one biblical prophecy right here. Israel versus Iran. There's Iran in Bible prophecy. The word of God shows us in Ezekiel. We see this nation in the news every day. We see it now that Iran's president was just killed. And so Iran and Israel both in the Bible all the time at war with one another. This is Bible prophecy according to Ezekiel. Jesus said in the last days there'll be wars and rumors of wars. And also it talked about Israel going through some wars. The war of Gog and Magog. It teaches that there'll come a time uh, at the end of days, the very end of days, where all where Israel, uh, Iran is called Persia in the scriptures. But Iran will be one of the nations with Russia that will team up to come against Israel with the help of the Antichrist. It also talked about Israel versus Iran. See, right now Iran has 60% 60, 60 nuclear weapons geared towards Israel. And in Israel, the uh, chief or head guy of Israel said he's not going to let that happen. I forgot his name though. But could 2023 possibly be the year where we'll see the war between Israel and Iran? And could this also be the year that we see Gog and Magog? Well, Iran will be one of those nations. And so as we see Iran in the scriptures, as we see Iran in the news, we know that Bible, we're seeing Bible prophecy in the news daily as we see this go on between Israel and Iran. It's in Iran that they actually have legislated to take Israel off the map by 2028. Huh? 2028, and, um, you know. Six, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. So you do have some Christian churches that that have some basic understanding of this. But let's read on. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. They must come to pass. This is the beginning of sorrows. Hey. That's right. These places are going to be hit, and the thermonuclear war is America. America is going to be wiped off the face of the planet Earth. That's going to take place before the year 2000. That's right. That's going to take place before the year 2000. That's right. America has less than 628 days before this country is taken out and thermonuclear destruction. This kingdom, America, is going to be destroyed before the year 2000. Before the year 2000, that's right, it's gonna come back. Museum of America is gonna be destroyed before the year 2000 by thermal nuclear destruction. Versailles, Persia, Ethiopia. The very first one was Persia. What's Persia to known as today? Iran. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, from the top. The president of Iran has now died in a helicopter crash. Let's look at what the Bible says about these kinds of turns of events. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. God said in the last days, Persia, which is modern day Iran, would become an enemy of Israel and would come against them. And that prophetic statement came true on April 13th, 2024, with the attack that we saw on Israel. It's incredible to see all of these prophetic statements coming true in our time before our very eyes. Iranians are innocent Palestinians. We would liberate them from the forces and the terror from the dictatorships and the despots who are ruling over them. Iran is the epitome of evil. Israel just struck Iran and this is everything you need to know. Lightning round. Multiple explosions were reported in Isfahan, which is in the central part of Iran. We don't know if there's any casualties at this time. There were near simultaneous reports of blasts in Iraq and southern Syria. We speculated that Israel hit Iran, Iraq, and Syria at the same time. Then U.S. officials confirmed that Israel was the one that carried out the strikes inside of Iran. Ir Maybe the only way to get the attention of the world was by taking the number one embassy of the world, the American embassy, uh, and, and, and taking it over and treating us like dirt and dust. And, and in this way, they got the attention of the whole world. 
Everybody knows about it. The United Nations has discussed it and, and rediscussed it and, and passed on it and so forth. And, and the world is looking toward this land. And the transition is being made prophetically to get this land ready to be aligned uh, with, our, with our next lesson, uh, which shows us the ultimate days of Iran. We have followed those days from the time of Noah over a period of 4,000 years uh, down to the end of time. And I'm sure that very few people in our country realize the destiny that was involved in this nation called Iran. Where does this align with, say, emergence of the Antichrist, tribulation period, and rapture? Yeah, mo most likely uh, the rapture of the church takes place, then this event happens. We don't know. I did a right. t uh, teaching for a while in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And we came up with 12 different views of what the timing of it. So it's not that clear. But it seems the church is out of here because at the end of yeah. Ezekiel 39, the eyes of Israel are open to the yes. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So True. it seems we're out of here when that takes place. That's I want you to write me today, secure your tape, and, and start learning these, these great and sacred truths right now. Write to me, Lester Sumrall, uh, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, zip code 46624. If you have come to know the Lord today in an intimate way, write and tell me about it. Say, Brother Sumrall, I've come to know Jesus as my Savior. Uh, I want you to, whoever you are, right this moment, I, I don't be confused about world conditions and don't be saddened by them. Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads and rejoice. Your redemption draws nigh. Jesus is coming soon, and we want you to be ready when he comes. Prepare right now for his coming, and be ready for our next lesson in the series of Iran uh, in Bible prophecy, and we will be so happy to minister to you in this way. And until we're back with you again, keep smiling, keep looking up, keep rejoicing, and remember, when you feed your faith, you cause your doubts to die. Let them die. Thank you. We hope you have gained a better understanding of the script, its program, and the prophetic events that many of God have revealed. To get this land ready to be aligned uh, with, our, with our next lesson, uh, which shows us the ultimate days of Iran. To delve deeper into these insights and join the discussion, feel free to leave your comments below and share your thoughts with us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos. Thank you for watching. Sound and logical.